there any odd items that you take with you every day? Chances are they probably aren't quite as strange as some of the stuff ye old ladies used to carry around. Well to do ladies of the 1700s never left home without their patch boxes which were filled with beauty patches. Beauty patches were pieces of silk often shaped like circles but sometimes fancier ones shaped like crescents, hearts, stars, and even horse-drawn carriages that women and some men would stick to their beauty blemishes. They first came into vogue after the smallpox epidemic which left behind scars. If it didn't kill you. Gradually, these intricate pieces of fine fabrics became a sign of wealth and luxury in the 18th century. One can never wear too many beauty patches. Well-heeled ladies of the 18th and 19th centuries often used decorative walking canes if ever taking a leisurely stroll outside. On the one hand, it might have been a little difficult to walk with all of the corsetry and skirting and petticoating and high-heeled shoes that they would have been wearing, but also so, in the heads of a lot of those canes, they stuffed vinegar-soaked sponges so they could take a sniff to cover up the unpleasant odors outside. Because remember, this was a long time before we had modern sanitation services. As an added bonus, that whiff of vinegar could perk them up if they felt like fainting. Whoa! Yep, not gonna faint <laughs> anytime soon. Whenever Regency of Victorian era women paid visits to other people's houses, she certainly would not arrive without her calling card. These calling cards were a lot like social business cards or fancy pieces of paper with your name on it that you would leave behind at someone's house, usually on a special silver platter designed specifically to collect calling cards. You would leave one behind whether the person you were there to see was home or not. If you were a very important person, your calling card would usually be left on the top of all the other calling cards so that future visitors would see, <gasps> Kristen Conker has been here? I'm feeling faint! Where's my walking cane and vinegar sponge? If you ran into a Victorian era woman, there is a good chance that she would be wearing or carrying someone else's hair. Hair jewelry, which is exactly what it sounds like, jewelry made from human hair, was all the rage during the Victorian era. Everything from a locket containing a snippet of a loved one's hair, all the way to intricately woven wreaths and watch fobs. Ladies of the day would collect snippets of hair from their besties to keep in inside an autograph book. It was a strange time. From the 16th to the 18th century, a woman's outfit would not have been complete without her fan. Now I realize a fan doesn't sound all that strange, but what's strangely incredible is how integral fans were not only to fashion, but also to a woman's communication, to the point that fans were known as a woman's scepter. She could use it to communicate all sorts of things, particularly to potential suitors, such as her flirtation, anger, or disgust. I need to work on my fan language. Certainly the design and ornamentation of a woman's fan also denoted things like social status and wealth. Or in my case, how much I really want to be a couple riding a romantic horse together. It's getting hot in here. I'm just gonna fan myself. I'm not taking off any clothes. <laughs> kidding me? Why would I ever take this off? Question. Yeah, answer. That's what I thought. Never. 